In our last video, we looked at the Android Activity Lifecycle and we saw how we can apply that to, just one moment, sorry. We saw how we can apply that uh, to our GPS activity by turning on an activity when, uh, turning on GPS rather, when the activity becomes visible. What we're going to do now is number one, we're going to look at the DDMS and see how we can send updates to our uh, to our Android application. And we're also going to look at the on pause method and see how we can unsubscribe from updates once we've left the screen. So first of all, here's our screen. I did <coughs> excuse me. I did have to make a few adjustments to it after the video just to, to get things lined up a little bit better. But you see right now we have latitude, uh, and probably I should add a little buffer between these two. But we have latitude 39.42, longitude minus 82. Now the trick is that I'm showing you this on an emulator. It's not a live device. So we are emulating. We are, or simulating, if you prefer, uh, these GPS locations. And we want to be able to do that. So what I did is I've put a breakpoint in request location updates, and I've also put a breakpoint in on location changed. I've put a breakpoint in both areas. So we can watch what happens when I change the GPS. What I'm going to do now is resize a clip so we can see it a little bit better. I'm going to click on DDMS. And this is how we can do a lot of emulations or simulations with the debugger. One of them, if I click, it's a little bit congested right here, but if I click on emulator control, uh, you'll see right over here on the right on emulator control, there's a place where I can send in location information. I can do some other things like uh, telephony, things like that. But uh, location, I can send in some location, some GPS information. You see now it's set to 39.42 and minus 82.08, which is uh, roughly, give or take a little bit, roughly Cincinnati's GPS location. Let's change this. Uh, I'll change this to longitude minus, um, actually I think it's, We'll change it to roughly London. Uh, actually, no, longitude. Yeah, longitude in the UK is, you know, you have you have uh, the um, meridian line. So the longitude is right about uh, zero, and the latitude is right around fifty-one and change. Uh, if you're if you're in London, it's right around fifty-one and change. It's one thing I've really enjoyed about GPSing plants all over the world is you get to kind of get this relation of where uh, things are in relation to each other. I think a lot of people don't realize that London and the whole of England is basically north of the southern border of Canada. So if you think the, uh, you know, where, um, uh, you think where the, where the, we have the 50th parallel, which basically cuts off the U.S., uh, much of England is north of that. So they have a very moderated temperature thanks to the uh, ocean, but their sunlight tends to vary a lot more than ours does. Much longer day length in the summer, much shorter in the winter than ours. In any case, I'll go ahead and send this, and we'll see as soon as I do that, the debugger picks up, and it notices that the location has changed. So, remember how this happens. We've subscribed to updates, okay, in request location updates method. Request location updates method is called by on resume. On resume is one of our Android lifecycle methods. Okay, so this is where we're simply saying we're interested in GPS in the on resume. Request location updates. Request location updates means we're going to listen for when the location changes. And with request location updates, we are going to use GPS location. We're going to get updates uh, it, it, about once a minute. Okay, we don't care about distance. And when we get updates, we're going to call a method that's in the current class. Okay, that's what this means. The method that's going to get called is this method on location changed. So we can see I can step over this one line at a time. And what I just did is I got the latitude and the longitude, the latitude 51, which was said, give or take a little bit, is roughly London. Longitude 0, which is not quite London. London's actually one degree off of, uh, off of the uh, meridian. Uh, but anyway, so we're somewhere in England with these points. 
And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the value of the lat latitude and longitude labels on my screen and hit play and let's take a look. And you see it's updated. Now again, I could probably tweak this. I probably need to add a little buffer here. But you see that it's now updated the latitude and longitude. Now the challenge is if we uh, if we left it like this, we would really consume a lot of battery life on the device because uh, we would still be subscribed to location changes after we dismiss the screen and even after we close the application. Uh, we definitely don't want to do that. So what we're going to want to do, allow me to control M so we can focus in. Uh, what we want to do then is we want to take our on pause method our on pause method that we've already created and we want to unsubscribe from location services in the on pause method. So in on pause we're going to create a method called remove location updates. Okay, And uh, this is a new method we're going to make. The red line indicates the method does not yet exist. So uh, click on it, control 1, create method Okay, there we go. Now what we're going to do in our remove location updates is we're going to say one second. We're going to say very simply uh, if location manager not equal null and again that prevents null pointer exceptions. Null pointer exception means we have a variable. We declare a variable and we don't put an object into it. So that way if we were to invoke a method on that variable, it would throw an all pointer exception, which would uh, shut down our application. And we certainly don't want to do that. So location manager, remove updates. And then we say, we no longer want the current object to receive these updates. Okay, so what I'll do here is I'll put some javadoc on this method. And the javadoc will say, uh, once, uh, let's say unsubscribe, from location services, uh, location services. Okay, on pause, I'm going to say when this activity is no longer visible, we want to unsubscribe from GPS, GSP, GPS. Okay, I'm going to snap a breakpoint in the on pause method and save. Okay, and we'll snap a breakpoint and remove location updates as well. Okay, and then again, save the application. It's probably going to disconnect me from the debugger. Okay, I'm going to disconnect. Um, I think that's all we need at the moment, to be honest with you. So I could probably, I'll probably go back and tweak the layout a little bit. Uh, but I think that's just about all we need at the moment. So I will save this. And then I'm going to restart the debugger, or I'm going to redeploy this to the debugger, which will take a moment. It typically takes a few moments for that. So I'll pause the video. Uh, let's see. We'll give it just a moment here, see how quickly it can come up. But if it does take time, I'll pause the video. What's interesting is that when I do bring this up, what's going to happen is it's going to stop on a breakpoint as the application is loading. So we'll give it just a few seconds here. Okay, and the application is reloading. Again, what it's going to do is it's going to render this application, but while it tries to render the application, it's actually going to uh, hit a breakpoint before it renders because the first activity it's going to encounter is that GPS activity. It's going to run the onCreate method, then the onStart, then the onResume. And I have a breakpoint in that onResume method. The onResume method is invoked before that first activity is shown. So while it's starting to render here, you see the screen is starting to come up and take a look. It now tells us it, it, it has encountered a breakpoint, but notice the screen has not been fully painted yet. The screen is still in process of rendering when it hits this breakpoint. So we choose yes and take a look where we are. We're in a method called request location updates. How do we get here? Well, this is one of those things where when the debugger opens up, you see all kinds of windows that are going on. You don't know what they are. Take a look up above. What you see here, thread one, this is what's called a call stack or a call hierarchy. It shows us the order of method calls that have occurred to get us to this point. 
And if you take a look right now, we're on line 119 of request location updates. If you look right below that, you'll see that what was called previously was on resume within our same class, and that called request location updates. So you can see a list of the method calls up here. On resume called request location updates. Who called on resume? Well, a lot of that was invoked by the internals of the Android operating system. But we know just by using this Android lifecycle that on resume is going to be called right before we're visible. So let's go ahead and keep walking through request location updates. It says, is the location manager not null? Well, let's take a look up again. Remember, on create, we look at the on create method. One of the things that has is location manager equals location manager get system service location service. Okay, so we know that that has already been called, which means that our location manager variable has been populated with the object from this method. Okay, location manager variable has been populated with the object from this method call. Okay, but how do we know that the onCreate method has already been called? Again, because of the Android activity lifecycle, we know that when on resume is invoked, on create has already been invoked. The only way we can get to on resume is if we've previously visited on create, and that's why on create is a good place to put any kind of uh, initialization that we need to do. Okay, so we go down and request location updates. Again, I'm going to F6 through this. And what that's going to do is it's simply going to tell the location manager uh, that we want to subscribe to GPS, refresh every, every minute, uh, we don't care about distance interval, and when we get a new location, we want to update the current object. We want it to call a method on the current object. So I'll go ahead and choose play, and after I choose play, we'll see that my first screen will finish rendering. And there we go, first screen is rendered. Right now you see latitude and longitude are empty. So from here I'm going to click on DDMS. And longitude I have 0.0, .0. latitude I have 51.54. Uh, let's change this just slightly. Though let's make longitude 1. Uh, let's make it minus 1. And we'll make latitude, we'll make it 52. How about that? 52. And then I'm going to hit send. Once again as I hit send, the debugger is going to open one more time because what happened is the location manager has delegated this call to on location changed. And where is on location changed? In GPS plan activity. So I F6, F6, it stores my latitude and longitude in variables that are fields so they can be used in other methods of this application. And then it updates the user interface. And sure enough, uh, there's the user interface. Again, I could probably do a bit of reformatting. There we go. Okay, let's now move to a different screen. Let's go to the Select a Plant screen. Okay, now notice that I pr press the button, but we're still on the GPS screen, and just now we're starting to refresh to another screen. As I go back, look what happened. It's invoked the on pause method. Okay. And what we're going to do now is we're going to unsubscribe. I'm going to F5 into here. We're going to unsubscribe or remove updates from the location manager. And there we go. And there we go. We say we no longer are interested in receiving these updates. And now I choose play. OK. And now with that, it should render our very next screen, which will be the selective plan screen. OK, let's say our favorite red bud. and search. Okay, that's going to take us to our results screen. I'll go ahead and play through this breakpoint. Okay, we'll give it just a, mo a moment more to load. A couple more breakpoints to hit it looks like. Uh, that one I know I can turn off. Let me turn this one off. There we go. And finally, we have our red bud. I'm going to click this, and this is now going to jump back to that GPS screen. Okay, this is going to jump back to that GPS screen. Let me walk through a few breakpoints here. 
And eventually it's going to go back and re-render the GPS screen, but it's going to put Circus Canadensis Redbud on that screen. Okay. On activity result, we'll go ahead and I'm going to take off some of these old breakpoints we're no longer using as much. Okay. Boom. Take off that breakpoint. And eventually, and here we go. Notice where we are. We're back in GPS plant activity, GPS of plant activity. Notice where we are here. We're on request location updates. Request location updates was invoked by the on resume method. Request location updates was invoked by the on resume method. Okay, so again, how do we get here? Well, what happened is when we went from the uh, when we went from the GPS screen to the search screen, we went to a pause state. We did our search, uh, then we looked at results, okay? When we looked at results, it sent us all the way back to our GPS screen, which called on resume, which once again is enabling uh, the location updates. So that came to our on resume, request location updates, okay? And boom. And now we're gonna request location updates and render this last screen. Okay, here we go. And now if I wanted to, I could go back to the DDMS. I can put in a new location if I wish. I'll do like a minus two and a 53, something like that, and send. And once again, because we've re-engaged, uh, because we've re-engaged the location manager, we'll see an update to our GPS, a live update right on the screen. So you see we're mixing two pieces of data together here, which is one thing I really like about mobile is that you have an opportunity uh, you have an opportunity to uh, integrate or aggregate data and that's where really as IT professionals a lot of times we have an opportunity to create a lot of value if we take two different pieces of data and put them together where they naturally match many times we can add value uh, to the data and again this is based on a project that I do uh, kind of as a hobby but uh, going out and GPSing plants all over the world. So we have here the Cincinnati Zoo, and I GPS these plants. Let me just scroll so we can see it. I GPS these plants using a very similar mechanism to the one that we just saw. Okay, let me resize this guy. There we go. So these are this is a locate. This is a the Cincinnati Zoo. These are about 250 plants. Uh, the GPS was something that was native to the phone that I captured. And then the plants were plants I already have in the Plant Places database. So a nice integration of two different pieces of data. I, you know, I've shown before a couple times. Uh, also, we have some other, some other gardens around the world that have been GPS, like uh, Cambridge University, which was a lot of fun. So this was one that I GPSed entirely offline. Again, I had a lot of the plants already in the plantplaces.com database, but the GPS is something uh, that I gathered from the phone. So think about that when you're doing mobile development. Think about uh, things where you can either take a photo with your phone and integrate that with other data, or maybe you can do some kind of GPS and uh, integrate that with other data, or photo and GPS. So a uh, fairly straightforward thing to do. So that's going to wrap us up for uh, for this session on locations and the Android activity lifecycle. The next few things we're going to look at is how we can deploy apps. I have an update that I made on plantplaces.com mobile and I deployed it and I recorded that entire uh, sequence. We'll also look at how we can save state when we change the orientation of our phone, also using some Android uh, lifecycle events. So that'll do it for now. I hope you enjoyed this GPS uh, session. I will post all of this to GitHub and put a link with this video. Uh, so you're welcome to take a look at the source on GitHub and as always appreciate your comments. Thank you.